Smith chart part 2. In this tutorial we are going to introduce a new term for you called as normalized impedance. In the previous part we discussed the reflection coefficient plane wherein reflection coefficient is written as k is equal to real part of k plus an imaginary part of k. Depending on the values of real part and the imaginary part we can generate a curve like this. All the values of reflection coefficients real part will fall on the horizontal axis. All the values of k imaginary part is going to fall on the vertical axis. So depending on the various positive or negative values of real and positive or negative values of imaginary you will get k either here, here, here or here. We established the goal of a Smith chart is to try and visualize the impedance value, right? So basically we are trying to draw the value of Z on the K plane. So using the space, anywhere inside the space, I should be able to plot my required Z value. In order for us to do this, we have to start looking at the link between impedance and reflection coefficient. For this we started off with the basic equations of reflection coefficient as k is equal to zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 where z0 is your characteristic impedance. zl is your load impedance and k is your reflection coefficient. This equation can be rewritten uh, in terms of ZL, ZL is equal to Z0 into 1 plus K divided by 1 minus K. Or I can write in general format at a particular length, at a length of let's say L, the value of impedance can be written as Z0 into 1 plus the reflection coefficient at that length divided by 1 minus k. From this it is clear that impedance value on a transmission line Z is related to k as Z is a function of the real part of k and the imaginary part of k. So if I know the value of Z I can generate a plot for the value of k or if I know the value of k, I can generate a plot for z from it. And this is what we try and do on a Smith chart. Either of these derivations will be done. But for us to get a general curve, we need to do something called as normalize the impedance value. This is very simple. It's nothing complicated. All we are trying to do is take the ZL, Z0 value, sorry, the characteristic impedance value and remove it from the left, right hand side. So you take an equation of Z of L divided by Z0, it will become 1 plus K divided by 1 minus K. This term over here is called your normalized impedance by performing this operation of normalizing we are not going to make any changes to the value of k. So the normalized impedance can be represented as ZL itself. ZL is equal to it is a complex number right? A complex value. So this complex value will also have a real part and an imaginary part. So the normalized ZL value can be written as R plus J X where R is a real part called as a resistance and X is the imaginary part called as reactance. So anytime we are trying to plot ZL on a Smith chart we will be representing the real part and the imaginary part. So how do we do this on a Smith chart? 
we start again at the equation of z is equal to 1 plus k divided by 1 minus k while considering the real and imaginary part and solving this particular equation the final real part you will see that the r values are found on a circle any values of r tends to fall on a circle within the k less than or equal to 1 plane. This is shown over here. You can see a family of circles within the k is equal to 1 plane. This is your k is equal to 1 plane. The values of z, r value, can take anything between 0 to infinity. So you'll see that if I'm having a r value is equal to 0, it is represented by the circle over here. So any point on the circle will represent a resistance value of 0. Suppose your r value is equal to 0 0.5. So this is a 0 0.5 circle over here, this one. So anywhere on the circle, the value of resistance is considered to be 0 0.5. Same way, you can see some more examples over here. R is equal to 1 circle, R is equal to 5 circle, and this point over here at the end of the Smith chart gives you a resistance value of infinity. So if you have to mark an impedance value on the K-plane with a real part and an imaginary part, Identifying where the real part should fall will be on all of these horizontal circles that you see on your Smith chart. Now we do have to represent the second part of it which is your reactance or your imaginary part. How does that go? After solving the k equation, 1 plus k divided by the 1 minus k equation, you'll see that all the values of the imaginary part or the, all the values of x tends to fall to fall on a circle having a radius of 1 divided by x, the details of which is not relevant. In other terms, you are saying that all the values of x falls on these vertical arcs that you see, a set of arcs that is there within the k is equal to 1 plane. The values of x can take anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. So if I'm having an x quantity, a reactance value of 0 0.5, this is a positive value of reactance, right? This positive value of reactance is indicated by a curve like this, this curve. So here, 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 anywhere, the value of x will be is equal to 0 0.5. If I'm taking a value of x is equal to 1, that would again this is also positive that will fall anywhere on this arc within the plane if I take a value of x is equal to minus 0 0.5 that is going to be over here this is the value minus 0 0.5 so any point on the arc shown over here indicates that the reactance value is negative 0 0.5 same way you can see some more examples of negative 1 and a reactance value of 0, x is equal to 0 means it will fall on the line. This particular point indicates that the reactance value is plus or minus infinity over here. That is reactance having a negative infinity or a positive infinity value. So we saw that in order to represent the impedance values reactance part we have to follow the arcs which are there within the Smith chart. Any values that are there any value that is there on the top half of this curve that is all of these arcs you have another arc going like this all of them represents a reactive value which is positive okay any value below the x is equal to 0 line that means these curves going like this. All of these curves indicates that the reactance value is negative. So this is how you represent your impedance value.
so I can say that if I want to represent z is equal to r plus jx on a k less than or equal to one plane which is denoted by let's say the circle the resistance value r will be drawn like this anywhere on these circles here these will show that it is a resistance value okay any value of reactance x will be identified on the values here positive these are the negative ones so the values that you find on the smith chart at these points like 0 0.5 you will find 1 over here and minus 0 0.5 and all of the values that are there at the intersecting point of the smith chart they are your reactance values and the values on the horizontal axis you'll find one over here and all the values less than one on this point all the values greater than one over here these values forms your resistance values so this is how you plot an impedance on a smith chart that's the end of the part two.